All right, guys, welcome back to the RM Profitable Lifestyle Gym Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Dornick. Join with me as well, Andrea Ramos. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. All right, we, uh, we're kicking this thing off, guys. This is uh, one of the most important uh, and I would say bothersome talkets for gym owners. So I'm like pumped to have this conversation. And uh, you love marketing. Gym owners do not, I will say. Um, and we're going to talk about what to do when you don't have time to market your gym. And this is a common response when I you know, talk to owners who are super busy. They have a lot on their plate. I completely understand. I'm a gym owner and I'm like, hey, I've got all these you know, roles and responsibilities juggling, but, and there's a big, but marketing is still essential and it's what's costing gym owners in many cases, the enrollments, the revenue. And I would even venture to say a lot of the success that is stuck and bottlenecked. And is this something that they can develop and move past and create time for Um, So that's what we're going to talk about today, guys, is if you're stuck on marketing and you've used the excuse of I don't have time, maybe it's time to go there and start figuring out if you really have time or you have a mindset problem. And that's where we're going. Uh, So, Andrea, this uh, this topic um, speaks volumes to the person that says, well, I believe in it, but I just don't do it enough or regularly. What the heck is going on with the gym owners out here saying Hey, I just don't like it. I don't want to do it. Where are they getting stuck in your opinion? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a very interesting question. Um, when, when I get asked like, Oh, what do I, I don't have time to market. Um, I can't do it. My, my day is so busy. I always get super curious about like, Oh, like I wonder where that's coming from because for someone who like, obviously like feels passionate and loves marketing, like in general, but from, from my perspective, it's almost like my brain is like, does not compute. Like I don't get it because I know that the role of a business owner is to bring in customers, create sales and money and service their clients. And when you first start your business, you have to do both of those really well. You have to get really good at bringing in sales and marketing, and you have to get really good at getting your clients results so that they can renew, tell their friends, and then like, you know, you grow your business. So when someone says, I don't have time to market, it almost is like they're saying, I don't have time to make money, which I'm like, I don't get it. What? (laughs) How, how is that even coming up for you? Um, and I think for me, it's like, oh, okay. I think it's because you don't believe that this is a part of your job and maybe your, the, your, the role that you think you have in your gym is to service your clients and coach. And that is half of your job, but you're like, no, this is a hundred percent of my job. It's taking up all of my time. I don't have time to do this other stuff the stuff that I have to do, the stuff that I like, no, I have to, but I don't want to. And so it can be really convenient to be like, well, I don't have time because I'm doing all this servicing. And I'm like, no, I don't think you realize your, what your job is. Yeah. There's a, there's an innate discipline with owners um, and entrepreneurs, more, uh, more of that mindset of I'm going to seek out discomfort because that's what I signed up for. Um, that's actually what I'm called to do by getting into business ownership. It's like, I'm not comfortable in the day job. I'm not comfortable with being told what to do, when to do it. Um, you know, kind of pushing the same old buttons every day, showing up to the, so I don't know why I had this vision of like pushing buttons in a cubicle. And that is the, the mundane job for someone. But if you do that, that's, that's definitely okay too. But my point is, it's like, you have to have that hunger in you to explore and tap into things that you don't know, things that you're stuck on. And I think that's the business owner mindset that I relate to. And what I see in people actually solving this is they're seeking that. Um, they're energized by 
I don't know how to do that. How do I do that? What do, what do, what do I need to work on? Um, and it's like this itch that you just can't seem to go away and you just want to keep scratching it. And I think that's the first piece of this is like this identity is what you're, you know, in some cases, um, you know, talking about, and you, you shared this with me, even like making, uh, you know, more content for forged, you know, I also, also identify as this coach and this, you know, uh, person that, uh, is really great at getting people from unhealthy and not on a plan and a routine to doing that. And I like, that's a big part of my identity. And then as I've grown as an owner, even in, in had to solve this, it's scary. It's uncomfortable. And then sometimes I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this. I, I'm not good at it. And it's like, so in my head. And I, I can relate to so many owners that say, well, I don't just have time. You know, I just, I got to work on service. And it's almost like you just kind of get upset with yourself and you're so hard on yourself that you're like, I can't do it. I need someone else to do it. Um, and you just kind of hit a wall, I think, with the identity piece. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like understandable that it's going to feel unnatural to like lean into that part of your identity. Now that you are a business owner, it's almost like you got handed these two, th- like you fully were like, this is the one that I'm like going to run after. I'm so passionate about. I'm a coach. I help people to get transformations. I like change lives. I'm all in on this. But as soon as you decided to become a business owner, you got handed another identity, yeah. which was like sales and mark, uh, sales person and marketer. And you were like, Whoa, I didn't want this. Why did, can someone else do this? I don't, it's not me. I'm the coach. And it's like, Whoa, no, 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 no. You don't get that choice anymore. Like at least not in the beginning. Right. There is something to like, I I learned how to do this. I grew my business. I now can hire someone to do it. Like I want to outsource. Like I I know how to do it. I don't love it. And I'm going to stay in my zone of genius. There's something to that. But in the beginning, like you, you are that person. Like you have to do both. Um, So, so I think that if you're kind of in that spot where you're resisting that part of your role, um, I think it's good to acknowledge that you're there and then also kind of understand that uh, you, your willingness to feel the discomfort of learning that skill set or leaning into that role is going to be the thing that like impacts your results, right? If you're yeah. willing to feel uncomfortable learning that, leaning into that, and you do that, your results are going to show because you're going to end up learning a skill, end up growing your business, end up making, you know, creating the business that you wanted to from the beginning. But if you're unwilling to do that, you're also going to see the results. So, so just know that like your results are not on accident. Like, it's not like, Oh, how did this happen? It's like, "Mm," it's an indication of like what you have done for your business, how uncomfortable you've been willing to feel. Let's talk about something that I hear often. Um, the owner takes responsibility, starts to recognize that accountability is on them. And, you know, they, they read articles, they study, they listen to people on the internet and they go out and they make a Facebook ad or a post or uh, put themselves out there. And then, nothing. And there's that, that first like resistance of like, I think there's like this moment of like, I'm learning, I'm doing, I'm going to change my business. I'm going to change my life. And then you're met, you know, met with that first resistance or wall. And I think there's a lot of people stuck right there. You know, on one end, I look at it totally like the responsibility thing is its own issue of like, you just haven't come to terms of like, Mm -hmm. this is the thing you signed up for. And How did you not see that when you stepped into ownership role? You could have just been a coach and not worried about any of this stuff, but you chose deep down this route. And then there's this, you know, acceptance of that and saying, okay, I'm going to learn it. I'm going to do it. And maybe I'm going to do it on my own. Right. I think there's a lot of people there of like, I I don't have the money to spend on it. I'm going to, you know, I I taught myself how to open this business and, and to be a great coach. I can teach myself to become a marketer. And then that first wall hits. And I think a lot of people feel that and it's like crushing. Um, you know, no one comments 
on the post. No one likes the image. It doesn't create a transaction. And there's so much weight in like, I make this post, it turns into a sale. And, and I think that shifts in, in terms of um, a new issue and a new mindset opportunity. Because um, that's almost like unrealistic expectations. It is unrealistic expectations. Um, but I didn't know that early on too. I was like, yep, I'm posting, boom, boom, boom. And then the first wall hits me and I'm like, whoa, you mean I didn't enroll 10 people off this thing? <laughs> <laughs> and it was discouraging, you know, and, and yeah. it, it, it can feel um, like you don't know what you're doing again. All the energy you put in and all the time can feel like for nothing. And I think there's a lot of people stuck right there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was very interesting that like the word that you described was crushing because it felt so heavy to me. Cause like yeah. when I get something wrong in marketing, I'm like, Oh, feedback. Why didn't that work? What did I not say? What, why was that not compelling or something worked? I was like, Oh, people really resonated with that. How did I say it? What was I thinking when I wrote this? Like it is all feedback. And I, so I never, I never get something back and I'm like, that was crushing. Like I, should I think never. that speaks to like, I don't know where that comes from. Maybe I, I think I'm speaking as, you know, it, the, the owner that feels the heaviness and marketing feels so heavy because it's a, it's not comfortable or it's something I'm good at, or like, you know, that's the weight, but it's interesting how you lighten that. Just you saying that um, for, for people out there listening, it's like, get over yourself. It's like, it's really not that heavy. Um, and there's no weight you're carrying. It's, and also it's... detaching it from your worth. I think like, mm. just because no one signed up for your program, doesn't mean you're a bad coach. Doesn't mean that your program is not transformational. It doesn't mean you're not good enough. It doesn't mean you're, it just means you didn't say the right words to compel them. You missed something. Something was off. And, or it just like, that wasn't, that wasn't what they needed to hear, right? Like there's so many different factors. The thing that you need to focus as a marketer is, am I getting better and better at reaching my people? Am I getting better and better at understanding why, like their objections about why they don't join? Why do they not book a call? Why do they not opt in? What are those things? Am I speaking to those things? Am I speaking to them well? Am I speaking to them clearly? This is a process. Like, it's like, just like building muscle, right? Like, it's almost like when you said, like, I posted and I didn't get 10 signups. It's almost like someone being like, I worked out. Why didn't I lose 10 pounds? Totally. Like, you'd be like, oh, you don't, I don't think you understand how this works. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to insert one more piece in this, in this moment of, okay, I've, I'm feeling like a, I'm not doing a great job. I'm really hard on myself as a gym owner marketer. This is often where I see people say, well, I'm just going to hire someone. And, and whether it's an employee, okay, that happens to know how to use Facebook or Instagram where they have an account <laughs> is, is sometimes the prerequisite of, of the employee being, you know, hired. Um, or, or maybe it's the person young, cleaning yeah. the gym who ha happens to have an Instagram account. Yeah. yeah, you're young. You understand social media. You'll run my my social media. That's another yeah. reason to hire someone. <laughs> so so they usually show up in that form. Um, and someone who just likes it, we'll we'll call it. You post a lot. You seem like you know how to use this thing and enjoy. So then that becomes the person, or it's just like throw this money at the problem and go hire a professional marketer to do your stuff. And I hear so many stories, failed stories, uncomfortable, uh, hard learned lessons of like, I feel like that also didn't fix the problem. And if it was that easy, everyone would have their 15 year old, you know, daughter or son doing their Instagram accounts, or, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't work that way. Um, there's, there's more to it. There's, I, I think, um, a message, there's a connection. Uh, there's a belief that, um, people need to trust that, you know, what you're talking about. Um, I also think that 
you can copy and paste messages and there's a loss of authenticity that you may not believe in as you hire someone out. And that was one issue I had. You know, I, I, I've told this story before, but just to reiterate, it's like I hired a, a digital marketer years ago and it, it was effective, but it made me feel so grimy. And like, it was like literally soft porn being published, like some of the videos uh, and images, like it wasn't part of my identity. Um, and the types of clients even coming in and where the conversations were starting. Um, it wasn't authentic. And uh, I hadn't done the work to your point of um, believing that this was my role. I thought I could just, it's someone else's problem to fix. And I think we were avoiding the big elephant in the room, which was it's my accountability um, to sit in that seat and say, this is an essential part of the business. And then it's also my responsibility to understand how this works and, and start solving these problems. And that means, even if I'm uncomfortable, that doesn't mean it's okay to avoid that and just hire someone out or you know, put the closest person raising their hand that has a Instagram or Facebook account. Yeah. Yeah. I think that like understanding that as when you said it's me, the, I don't know, this probably won't, um, land with a lot of our audience. <laughs> unless you listen they, to uh, Don't hold anything back. What are you unless saying? Unless you're a Taylor Swift, uh, listener, <laughs> but I happen to be, so don't judge. <laughs> so have you heard the, like, it's me, I'm the problem. It's me. Like yeah. that's her new song. So yeah, it's like, my daughter I'm has like, Taylor Swift on, on replay. <laughs> all right. And my nieces. So I totally get it. <laughs> so it's like, Oh, maybe it's not like the marketing company or the person that you hired just didn't pan out or, um, the agency posted all this stuff, but like, it's not really landing. Uh, maybe it's not them. Maybe the problem is you just never took on your job role and you're like, I don't want to figure this out. Let me pay someone to do my job, but I don't really know how to do it. So they'll figure it out. And they got it. Ugh, I don't want to deal with it. So it's just isn't good. that, isn't that, this is a side fun fact. Uh, Taylor Swift actually broke Ticketmaster and it was interesting. Like that message is so compelling because so many people relate to that. <laughs> but that's like, that's the, the funny thing. It's like, you can't avoid that. It's like, it's the natural reaction is I think to like look outward at like blame or like it's someone else's problem, but it always comes back to us. Yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, tangent, but that's. It's, it's taking ownership of what's yours to take ownership over. And I think right yeah. now, gym owners don't think sales and marketing is theirs to own, but it, but it is, it is your role as the owner, leader, CEO of your business. Um, I also wanted to speak a little bit to, I've been doing this and it's just not working. Mm -hmm. Like I posted and it didn't work. I posted and it didn't work. There is something to that, right? Like if you, and I think that I would always ask like, okay, how long have you been doing this? So if someone's like, I've been posting for two weeks and I've gotten no enrollments. I'd be like, okay, keep, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> I was just like, give it some time. So that would be the first thing. Now, if someone's keep, like, keep working out, <laughs> don't, don't stop coming. Yeah. yeah. Same analogy. So if someone's like, it's been 90 days and like literally nothing, no enrollments at all, like nothing to show for it. Then I'd be like, okay, great. We have a lot of data. And so now I would evaluate what is your messaging? Where are you directing people to? What have you been talking about? Are you speaking to their objections? Are you speaking through to their desires? Are you speaking to their pain? Like, let's look at the content you've created over the last 90 days and really see, did like, why did this work or why did this not work? And that's what I think a lot of people don't do. They don't evaluate what they did. They're just like posted, posted, ah, it's not working. Why didn't it work is such a great question to answer because again, it like strengthens like, 
it just strengthens your ability to know what resonates and what doesn't. So the next time you post, you're like, I'm not going to post about this because it didn't work last time. And I tried it for 90 days. So maybe let's shelve that and let's try a different angle. And I don't think enough people are doing that because it takes coming to terms with like, that didn't work. And again, if you attach that to your worth, it's going to be like, I suck. I'm bad at this. Yeah. I I think this, uh, not to go down too far, the psychology side, it's like, who's asking themselves that question? You know, it's like therapy. It's like, you need someone to talk to, to reveal some of these things about yourself. And, you know, why didn't it work would require that person to be like, it was dang it. It was me, (laughs) you know? And like, who wants to point the finger at themselves? Because that's, that's tough to do, but you have to embrace that as an owner. Like that is what we're talking about. The Taylor Swift song. It's like, at some point you have to submit and say, I can get better at this, but why didn't it work comes with that reset button of, well, I did this and this, and I could in the future do it this way or this way and make this adjustment. But if you don't ever ask yourself, it's a lot easier to throw up your hands in frustration and just say, okay, I tried it. It doesn't work. Facebook doesn't like me. Yeah. And I wouldn't even like point the finger at yourself. Like, okay, we definitely joked about like, it's me, I'm the problem. But if something didn't work in your marketing, yes, there there is something for you to own, but I don't want you to own that and like use it against yourself. Like ownership is supposed to be a really empowering thing. Like I own that. Here's my part. Not like, oh, I'm the worst. I'm not good at this. Like you can own something in totally different ways. It could be an empowering thing or you could throw yourself a pity party. Don't throw yourself a pity party, own it in the sense of like, yep, what I created did not create the result that I want. Why didn't that not work? Like what, what happened and give yourself grace and compassion that like the person who created that content literally did the best that they could given the information that they had. So you did your best. And now your best is going to get better because you have new information. You have new data. So when you repeat the process, you're going to try your best again. So it's like a lot of times there's so much shame and like, ah, that didn't work. Pass me blew it. And it's like, you did your best with all the data that you had. You are about to get more data. So you're going to compound that to, to grow your best. So just like enjoy the process of getting better and better. I love that. I I think there... There's also another thread in this. Um, Going back to the time, it feels slow or it's taking too long. And it it shouldn't be this hard. Or so-and-so over here and here make it look easier. They don't have this much difficulty. I think a lot of that can show up too um, in this you know, time period of saying, okay, well, I, I published this and I'm starting to see that, you know, I've got to make some adjustments and that's part of the process. But it's interesting how the headspace starts continuously showing up of like, well, they have it easier or, you know, it's working better for them. Um, I hear that a lot. And, and this is actively happening while they're trying, but there's that comparison. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, what would you tell your, your members? If someone's like, well, they can squat 300 pounds and I can only squat 260. Yeah. Okay, that, why, why are you comparing? You're here to work out for you. You're here to build your own strength. You're like, what are you here to be the best in the gym? Is that the goal? And if it is, why is that the goal? Like, Is it because you're really competitive and you want to be the best ever? Or do you want to be the best that you can be? Just getting curious with yourself. Like why is comparing, why are you comparing? Is it because you feel threatened by someone's success because now they're going to quote unquote, take up all of the, the gym members and enrollments. Is it because you don't like not being the best at something? 
Um, how is that hurting you? If you're a beginner at marketing and you, you need to like have the space to not be the best because you're literally a beginner. So yeah, I think it's just an interesting thing to unpack. You said something to me the other day. I don't want to take this off topic, but you said, hey, are you worried about the recession? You know, there's, and you brought in all these factors of, you know, the economy slowing down and what if, you know, incomes drop and what's that going to do? And my response was fairly sharp. I'm, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to sell more. And I was like, just going to sell more, right? <laughs> Great and, response. <laughs> um, and it's interesting because it's almost like it's what we do. It's like, this is a part of the process. This is a part of growing and being an entrepreneur. It's like, I've owned that and am accountable to that. And what else am I to do? Close up shop. Am I going to turn around? Am I going to like bunker up and just say, I'll wait it out. It's like, there's that level that you graduate to, but you have to have a sense of self and identity. Like, so that's, that's earned guys. Like you have to go there. But I think the important piece that triggered this is like, it's freaking scary. <laughs> like, and there's fear tied to that. But every time like you lean into it, you're just like, oh, I didn't know that. I learned that. And it's just like these breadcrumbs that start stacking and then they become like your armor. And you're just like, man, I can take on anything, including a recession. So to speak to that comparison piece, it's and it, it, it kind of draw this in. It's it's like you have to recognize and appreciate that someone has their shit together in marketing. You're like, man, it's not comparing. It's like, that's good. Or I like that. Or how did they do that to your curiosity mind and mine too? It's like, well, they didn't start there. And that's the first thing you're trying to fool yourself on. It's like, they've been putting that in the work behind the scenes and you haven't seen it. And, and to the person, you know, squatting more than you, it's the same thing. There's something that you're missing the brain connection of. They didn't go from here to here overnight. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we got to get back down to like composure level and be like, oh, I can get there too. What are the steps? Where am I at in relation to building enough skill and consistency to, to feel like I'm a good marketer? Um, this is working. I got a plan. And, th and that's what we're talking about today is, is just saying, hey, like this is possible for all of you. You know, and I think there's too much of this headspace and mindset, you know, negative self-talk, as you, you know, mentioned. And it's all kind of like a mess of like, how do I unpack this? Because I think truthfully, I believe that as owners, um, they want to, but there's not a good plan um, or maybe you haven't found someone um, who connects with you and how you think about things to help you unpack that. But it's possible. Because yeah. I'm, I'm standing here saying, man, I was the, you know, this is a story. I don't think I've told anyone this, but early on in my, uh, you know, gym days, the internet was really not a, a, a first start to promoting. It was actually like network marketing, like going up and talking to people, guerrilla marketing. I used to practice talking to my pull-up up rig. Um, that's the pole, literally the pole. And I would video camera myself and, and try to get better. And I'd stumble and I'm like, man, this feels like I'm trying to talk to a, a girl and I don't know what to say and nothing comes out. And it's like, that's how bad I wanted to, you know, get better at this. Cause I knew at that time being an entrepreneur, you know, right from the start, it's like, I got no one else. There's no one going to do this for me. But that's the level I wanted it. And I feel like that's been lost a little bit. Um, I don't know if that's the internet um, in the ease of just putting it out, out there and set it and forget it. But I, I think those things were um, more prevalent of like ownership of this is my responsibility, my accountability. And there's certainly more options in the market now to go hire a marketer or, you know, so it, maybe it has to do with that, but the, the accountability side is never removed as a business owner. Um, I just don't want you guys to forget that it still comes down to you and that curiosity inside of you on why you started your business. Like yeah. it really, it really does 
have to get retapped into. Maybe it's died a little bit. You know, maybe it, maybe you need to be, you know, woken up in your business and, and have a new challenge. Maybe you're bored, you know, and you haven't found the right angle to look at it. Um, Cause now I look at marketing, it's fun. Um, I'm excited about, you know, how it comes together and how it can um, start people's journey in fitness. You know, I think that's the coolest thing that we get to do is like be that moment where someone realizes we can help them. And that, that moment where they're like, Whoa, I've never found anything like this. And, and it, you're, it's more money than I've ever spent, but I see the value in it. Like that's like a, for every, like, disappointment on posting and like working through that headspace when you get to that moment you're like it's all worth it Mm -hmm. yeah yeah like your marketing being the first thing that facilitates that transformation that you like love so much is like another empowering way to look at it same with the sale like the sale is the first transformation that you walk your prospects through it's the first time like you get them from a to b as a coach your yeah. marketing brings that. So it's all of it is for um, the end goal of transforming and helping and impacting lives. Like from the marketing to the sales to the service, like it's your commitment to, I want to transform this person. I want to help this person. I want to walk them through this valuable transformation. That's going to be life-changing. Every single part of that is my role, not just the service. Um, something that I wanted to and just say is just like your gym members need help building that identity, need help building that skill set, need help building um, the mindset. Like there is something to having a coach, right? I mean, obviously you guys know that you believe it, like you you're in the coaching space for your gym members. Um, but maybe like you as an owner, in order to build that identity in sales and marketing and like really strengthen that you you are going to need some accountability coaching and guidance so yeah it's a good segue and i mean that's what um worked for me you know um when i was just starting out i i couldn't couldn't get past talking to the pole and and you know <laughs> that being the only thing that did it for me um do you have the videos i do i'll find it for you and post it it's somewhere um it's going to be very grainy quality, but you're going <laughs> to, I'll find it somewhere. Uh, we'll all have a good laugh. Um, but uh, like myself, I needed someone to push me. I needed someone to call me out when I was hiding and when I was turning away from the opportunity to grow as a business owner. And that's truly what we're doing at Factory Forged is providing an opportunity to work with you to um, remove the sticking points, but also build the skill set. And it's, you know, done with you. So um, not only does it improve the speed in which you get to where you want to go, but it helps you see all the angles so that you master that experience needed to truly, you know, take your business to the next level. So if you're interested in that, um, join our 12-week program. It's the first step. It's called Momentum. It's how you start getting unstuck and building that momentum in your business across five key business systems. So this isn't about just, working on one aspect of you, we're going to look at it as a complete whole business. And truthfully, that's what you're powering and that's what you want to build up. So anything less than that, you'd be cutting corners. And to our owners, they don't want to do that. Uh, They want to master um, the business and and be a professional coach. So if you're someone who wants that type of help, um, one of the first things that we address is how to get uh, your prices established at a profitable rate, how to grow into the, the coach and owner capable of selling that, and then how to attract your first 10 members um, into that program so that you believe it, you master that skill and you can repeat it on your own um, so that your business really starts to take off from there. So uh, reach out to us. I want to have that conversation about where you're at, what you're looking to build, what skills you want to improve as an owner and help you get there. So factoryforge.com forward slash call. And uh, we'll hop on a call. I'll walk through every aspect of, you know, your situation, give you some advice and also point you in the right direction. And if I think I can help, uh, we'll take the next step and do it together. So thanks again, guys. And thanks, Andrea.